Hi, and welcome back. This video is part of the free Blazor crash course. In this crash course, we built an actual Blazor WebAssembly application based on .NET 5. In this video, we will integrate a third-party user interface library. We will then use that library to build a dashboard for the Finance Mentor application. Hi. I'm a software engineer with more than 10 years of experience with the .NET platform. In this crash course, we focus on Blazor web app development. This time, we build a dashboard for the Finance Mentor application. The first row contains a bar chart with the bars for every month in 2021. We compare the sum of the earnings to the sum of the expenses. In the second row, we have a more detailed view of all the earnings in the last three months grouped by its category and displayed using a pie chart. The third row also contains a pie chart of all the expenses in the last three months grouped by its category. Let's start by looking at the library we're going to integrate into the Finance Mentor application. Redson is a company that develops user interface libraries. They also have an open source Blazor components library with more than 60 native controls. The library is open source and we can even use it in commercial projects for free. What's interesting to us developers is that we can use the same library for server-side and client-side Blazor. Let's take a look at the components we will use in this video. We will use the charts from the Redson library. To be specific, we will use the column chart and the pie chart components. Redson does not sponsor this video, but so far I had a great experience using this library and therefore want to spread the word about it. You can find the Redson Blazor components library at blazor.redson.com. Now that we are convinced that we want to use the Redson Blazor components library in our Finance Mentor application, we need to install the Nugget package. Open the Nugget Package Manager for the FinanceMentor.Client project. In the Browser tab, we search for Redsend.Blazor. We install the latest stable version. At the time of this recording, it's version 3.2.0. Next, we open the underlying imports.razor file and add the Redsend and Redsend.Blazor namespaces to it. Namespaces added to this file become available to all components in our Blazor application. Next, we open the index.html file and add a reference to the Redsend stylesheet. The underlying content part of the address is Blazor specific. It specifies that the desired file is part of the Redsend.Blazor Nugget package. We're almost ready. But before we can implement the first component using the Redson Blazor library, we also need to add a reference to the JavaScript file. Below the script tag for the blazor.webassembly.js file, we add another line to load the redson.blazor.js file. Now that we installed the library, let's see if it works. We open the index.razor file and use the redson button component. Let's build and start the application. We can see the beautiful Redson button on the index page of the Finance Mentor application. Before we start building the dashboard, let's clean up the index page. We remove the Redson button we added before, and we also remove the survey prompt component that was generated as part of the project template. We can also remove the survey prompt.razor file in the Solution Explorer. Before we can implement the charts, we need to implement a data service that returns the data in a structured way. For simplicity reasons, I put it all in the same service. Let's start by creating a new folder in the client project and name it Services. Next, we create a new interface and name it iData Service. I paste a snippet for the interface definition that defines a method to load data for the last three months and the year for both the expenses and the earnings. Next, we create the data types we used in the iData service interface definition. Let's create a new class in the service folder and name it yearly item. 
The yearly item data class contains two properties. We define a string month property and the decimal amount property. Next, we create a new class and name it three months data. We create three properties of the monthly data type and name them current month, last month and previous month. Now let's create another class and name it monthly data. In this class, we define a data property of type i collection of monthly item and a label property of type string. Last but not least, let's create another class and name it monthly item. This class contains a decimal amount property and a string category property. Now that we defined all the data classes and the iData service interface, we need to implement the data service. Let's create another class in the services folder and name it data service. We need to call the backend API in this service. Let's inject an instance of the HTTP client type in the constructor of the data service class and save it in a private field. Let's derive the class from the iData service interface. We need to implement the four methods we defined in the interface. To save us time, I paste the implementation of the data service class before we go through the implementation together. Let's discuss the general idea behind the implementation of all four methods. We call one of the API endpoints we implemented in a previous video of this crash course. Next. We use link to transform the data into the structure we need for the dashboard and finally, we return the data using the data classes we defined before. I don't want to spend more time discussing the data layer of the dashboard. Let's move on and implement the Blazor part of the dashboard next. The only thing left to do is to register the data service in the dependency injection container. Let's open the program.cs file and register the service. Back on the index page, we remove the existing template and replace it with the following snippet. In this snippet, I defined a row using Bootstrap CSS classes. Let's create the code section and define the current year field. Now let's implement the bar chart together. First of all, we use the Redson chart component. Next, we use the Redson column series component. This component represents a series of data points that will be rendered in the bar chart. Let's assign a color to the fill property and set the data property to a variable we'll be implementing soon. Next, we set the category property to month and the value property to amount. We set the title property to earnings and the line type to line type dashed. Next, let's copy the line to create another column for the expense data. We change the color in the field property, change the data property to use the yearly expenses variable and set the title to expenses. We use a few more options and components to make the chart look better. I prepared a snippet that I'm going to insert here. Next, we need to implement the missing variables in the code section of the index page. Let's start with the format as USD method. I insert another snippet. Next, we define the fields that hold the data for our charts. Now let's add the missing using statements at the top of the component. We also inject an instance of the type iData service that we will be using to retrieve the data from the API. In the code section, 
we implement the uninitialized async method to load the data when the component is rendered on the screen. We also call the state has changed method at the end of the method to make sure that the component re-renders when the data is loaded. That was a lot of code. Let's start the application to see our changes in action. As you can see, we now have a bar chart with bars for the expenses and earnings for every month in the current year. Sure, we had to implement a lot of data access code, but the Blazor code we used to create the bar chart is less than 50 lines of code. Before we celebrate too much, let's continue with the dashboard by implementing the pie chart component. We will use components from the Redsend library again. This time, we want to implement a reusable component because we will be using the pie chart component multiple times in the dashboard. Let's create a new component in the components folder and name it pie chart. I'll insert a snippet for the template definition. We define a diff where we show a label for the chart. We also use the Redsend chart component again. This time, we use the Redsend Pi series component as its child component. Again, we fill a few required properties. Next, let's implement the component code. We want to make the variables available from the host of the component. First, we define a colors property of the type I collection of string. This variable holds the colors that will be used in the pie chart. Next, we define a data property of type monthly data. Let's add a using statement for the finance mentor .services namespace. Finally, we define a label property of type string. To make all the properties available from the hosting component, we add the parameter attribute. Back in the index.razor file, we use the pie chart component. I insert another code snippet. Again, we use Bootstrap to create a row and we use a Bootstrap card. In the card body, we add three charts to display the last three months' earnings data. Let's add the code before we work on the template. We create a private field that holds the colors for the pie charts. Next, we add a private earnings variable of type 3 months data. It will hold the data we want to display in the pie charts. In the initialized async method, we call the data service to load data into the earnings variable using the load last 3 months earnings method. Now let's add the pie chart component to the template. We use the colors variable for the colors property and we use the different properties on the earnings object for the data property to show all three months in a pie chart each. Now let's copy the template and the defined variables to do the same for the expenses. That's it. Let's build and run the application. And there it is. We see a beautiful dashboard on the homepage of the Finance Mentor application. On the first row, we have an overview of all the data for the year 2021. Below, we have monthly charts for the earnings. And if we scroll down, we see the monthly charts for the last three months' expenses. For April 2021, we only have housing and entertainment. Let's add a new entry to the April 2021 expenses. We navigate to the expenses page. In the form on the right, we fill in dinner as the subject, select the food category, set the amount to 25 and press the submit button. We can see the new entry in the list on the left. Let's go to the home page. We scroll down to the bottom and look at the April 2021 expenses. We see a small slice for the food category. Congratulations! 
You implemented the Finance Mentor application as a practical Blazor WebAssembly application. This video is the seventh part of the free Blazor crash course. You learned about the Redson component library for Blazor applications. You learned how to integrate a third-party user interface library into a Blazor application. You learned how to use the Redson component library to build a dashboard using the chart components. You completed the Finance Mentor Blazor WebAssembly application. This video concludes the 7th part free Blazor crash course for now. We built the Blazor WebAssembly application and learned everything about Blazor component development, form handling, API handling, building a model dialog component, CSS handling, using images, and building a dashboard using a third-party user interface library. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about Blazor development. Depending on the feedback, I might create additional episodes in the future or upload a Q&A video. Don't worry, I'll be uploading many additional Blazor and .NET development videos on this channel. Thanks for watching and see you in another video.